So we're here looking at uh, sim tools, and we do have uh, we have our game manager here, which always is going to have to be running while you're using uh, your motion simulator, as well as the uh, the game engine, which we're going to go over those. Uh, these are the four icons or apps or whatever you want to call them. Uh, obviously, the one is the game manager. This is the game engine. The plugin updater you're going to use when you want to load plugins like uh, different games. Uh, the Sim Tools launcher, apparently, I don't use that. So what it does is it kind of tries to load up everything all at once for you automatically, and it doesn't seem to work uh, for me. So I do not use it. So it's up to you. So we're going to drag it out of here. All right. Again, the plugin updater. There are videos. I've seen them because I've used them personally. Uh, on how to use the plugin updater to put all of these great profiles for your settings into uh, into that. So we're going to get rid of that. All right, game manager just has a list of all of your games. Uh, if you upload a new game with the plugin manager, you're going to have to patch it. So you know if you click like let's say iRacing and you got to click patch. And it says my game is patched. So I've just purchased uh, Elite Dangerous, and I haven't done that yet. So no patch. So you have to patch the game. Would you like to patch for motion? So you're going to go through this little thing. Some of the games uh, are definitely harder than other games to, to patch. And you can definitely head over to X Simulator. Uh, they have all of the information. That's pretty much where I get all of my information from. That's how I make all these videos possible and make this platform work. Uh, so definitely a wealth of knowledge over there. Uh, so yeah, again, so you're going to need the game manager running at all times. And the game engine is really where all the action takes place. So you have different settings, uh, different tabs here. You have your home screen. Uh, you have your access adjustments. We're going to go through that because that's a major one. Access assignments. Uh, interface settings is really where this machine is looking for and depending upon the motion rig that you have they will provide most of this information really the only thing that you're putting in is uh, what USB COM port that you're using and I will say that at least the DOF reality rig does not like to be moved around it likes to stay in the exact same port that it was uh, originally installed in, which is a SS, you know, the high speed 3.0 crazy port that I have it plugged into. All right, so if any of this information looks or helps you in any way, uh, feel free. So it, there are different options as to what you can use SCN, uh, you know, obviously I have the serial motors. And then there are different presets that they, that they offer. And, uh, but I have everything already kind of the way I want it. So uh, tools. We're going to skip output testing. So tools is where you can, so you have your preset installer. So that's where all of these presets are going to go in. The plugin updater updates this, this guy here. The plugin updater updates game manager. The presets are done here. And there's some other, you know, stuff that I really don't know how to use and don't really use. So I'm getting by without them. Feel free to, uh, to uh, figure that out on your own. Output testing. This is where you're going to basically turn your machine on and control it to see if it's going to work in-game. Uh, let's go back to access adjustments real quick. Sorry, we're jumping all over the place. But so it's going to save the profiles of every game that you use. So let's say that if I'm trying to fly X-Plane, it's going to turn my third motor, which is the traction loss. Uh, it's going to turn that off. And it's going to turn everything up. 150% is the highest that it will go. So everything's turned up to 150%. This is motor one. This is motor two. This is motor three, which is my traction loss motor. This will tell you the opposite direction if you click this, which is like a, you know basically reverse. And then you can you can actually choose what each of these are going to do. You can do heave, yaw, sway extra one extra but it depends upon the rig that you have and what you actually can can recreate with how many uh, DOFs that you have 
All right, so if we go down to, like, let's say uh, iRacing, that's going to suddenly kick in my traction loss. It's going to lower my pitch and roll. And just, you know, you can really modify it to have the settings that you're looking for. Now, the last thing before we jump over here is we're going to look at access limiting. And a lot of people call this smoothing. Now, what this does is it limits the amount of power that can be distributed to the motor. And to better demonstrate that, with access limiting, what's actually happening is uh, they, call it, they call it smoothing. What it does is it, it's how much power you actually want to give to each motor. So, again, I have one, two, three motors. This is the traction loss motor. And the best way to demonstrate that is really to just show you uh, with the settings. So, we're going to go out of this real quick to output. We're going to turn the entire system on test. Now, I can simulate roll to the right, to the left. Now, how much power of the smoothing is how quickly it will get from one side to the other. Now, I'm going to hold on. So, and you see how responsive that is. So, we can go pitch forward and back, forward and back, and again, quickly, if we want to really pretend like we're in a low rider. Hey! All right, so, sorry. Uh, the rest of these we don't we can't simulate with this motion rig. Now we can simulate surge, but it really just kind of is a playoff because we only have two motors. So you can roll and pitch, sway. Now realistically, we're still just pitching it, but it's using different axes to basically give you that range of motion. We're going to reset these. And we're going to go to more. And you have extra one, which is my traction loss motor. And this should kick me over to the right and over to the left. And back and forth. All right, now what we're going to do this time is we're going to turn off the test mode because you can't really do anything when it's turned on, including in-game. If the game is running, this will say game running, and you will not be able to adjust settings. You will have to exit the game and get back into the game. So we're going to go back to access adjustments. We're going to go back to access limiting. We're going to turn this way down, maybe 25. Okay. Now again, our smoothing, our power to the motors, we're going to save, go back to output testing, we're going to turn it back on again. Now you see the difference? There's almost no movement. I mean, there is. More. So realistically, 25 was too much. We turn it down too much. So let's go back. Let's maybe give it 40 something. 44. Yeah, hard four. Deuce, deuce. All right, here we go. Okay, so we got a little bit more speed now. We got some speed back. So where is this useful and why are we using it? Every game is different. Some games require that really sharp jolt, whereas some games you want it a little bit more smooth and not so abrupt, uh, particularly flight games. Uh, with the power just too much up, it kind of doesn't feel as realistic. So if you turn it down just a little bit, it feels more like a buffet if you've ever been in an airplane. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this off here. So again, 
you would use a lot of the smoothing depending upon your situation. For instance, when I play, sometimes I like the motion turned up quite a bit and have the rig throw me around. There are other times where I would prefer to just have a more mellow uh, experience. Also, when I have friends come over and they're not sure whether or not they really want to get into the motion rig, especially after watching me with the machine all over the place. So you can turn the settings down, make it more mild. Perhaps you have kids coming over and you don't want to literally throw them out of the chair when they hit the wall. Again, you can still give them that motion experience, but turning it down so that way it's not literally uh, ejecting them from the, the rig. So in my final uh, little closing speech here, I'm going to give to you a few little pieces of advice uh, that I've learned in my journey uh, using the motion sim and sim tools and, and just getting it all to work because it can be frustrating at times. But again, X Simulator definitely uh, helped me. I can't even describe how much. I mean, that's where you're going to get all these plugins anyway, so you're going to be there regardless. But uh, don't just download stuff and go. I mean, be part of the be part of the journey. And trust me, you're going to have questions, and people on the forums are eager to answer. So another thing, if you have this kind of a system and you're trying to watch these videos and figure it out, my suggestion is always uh, a restart the computer. Uh, if things aren't working, if you go to output testing and you turn it on and you move these sliders and nothing is happening, but you can hear the motors are on and everything's running and you know the, the computer recognizes it and everything is together, uh, restart your computer. Try that first. Uh, number two, I all the time have to, uh, it likes to, let's just say it likes to auto run game manager as soon as I turn the computer on. Well, sometimes I haven't actually got to turn on the uh, motion yet. So when you do, this thing doesn't like to talk to it. So what I do is I have to exit out of this. Game manager does not come on automatically for me. So I exit out of this. I relaunch Game Manager, then I launch Game Engine, then I test. And if everything works, you're good to go. If it doesn't, I will do the same thing. I will exit out, and I don't just mean close this, because when you close this, it doesn't go away. You have to go down to the little bottom of your, your screen and uh, actually left-click, or I'm sorry, right-click, and it'll, you know, it'll give you the option to completely shut the app down. So then relaunch and try it again. There have been many times where on the third or fourth retry, all of a sudden it kicks on and works. It's not often, but it does happen. Ever since I got in the habit of just shutting it all completely down and just starting from scratch every time, it has seemed to work. Another piece of information. Uh, the motion, especially playing certain games, does not like uh, other USB devices. And I mean that in the order that you turn them on. I always turn SIM tools and the DOF Reality Rig on first. That is always the first thing I test, make sure it's working. Then I start turning on other devices, whether it be my shifter, my wheel, uh, you know, maybe some kind of racing display, uh, cameras, anything. Anything that you're going to plug in that's USB, do it after you put in SIM tools. And every time you plug something in, you can just go to turn on and verify that you're still connected. And sometimes you want to go into your game. Project Cars 2, for instance, does this a lot where I will have everything working when I go out of the game. But as soon as I go into the game, I will start driving and I realize there's no motion. I go back out and there's a little, uh, a little window that says something about a shared memory file that couldn't be opened. And almost nine times out of ten, it's usually either my Renovatio uh, racing gauge or my Logitech uh, S920 camera or C9, whatever the hell that 920 camera is. Uh, so, again, just make sure that they're first. Uh, as long as you verify everything's working along the way and get into the game and then, you know, like for instance, my Renovatio that gives me issues, I don't turn it on. 
I get everything working, I go into the game, I play the game for a few seconds, I come out of the game, I turn the Renovatio on, I go back in, and everything works. Pain in the ass, but again, that's what you're going to deal with. But the key is you didn't spend all that money for a motion simulator to not have motion. So in the end, that should be your primary goal. Uh, I'm sorry if I rambled for 20 minutes. I apologize. I hope you found some of this helpful. Uh, here's those interface settings again. And um, thanks for watching. Uh, check out more videos as I continue this awesome journey. Take it easy.